There's always a gap of missing content when an anime season comes to an end, especially when it's the holidays around December. And so because of that, usually around this time, I always spend my time looking for different series, things that I have not read yet, things that have been on my radar, things that, you know, I kind of want to try out. And today I want to talk about a series called Sisters at War that caught my attention and it is something I want to recommend to all of you if you're seeking something new new to read if you have the time. So let's um let's get right into it. Let's talk about Sisters at War and let's see if it's something that might actually interest you. So first things first I want to make sure is very clear when you think of the title Sisters at War instantly you might assume that it's going to be a rom-com. It's going to be two sisters maybe fighting over a male love interest. That's what you would assume. But I want to make it very clear before I go any further, uh, you know, in this video and talk about Sisters at War, I want to make it very clear that this is not a rom-com. This is not a series to where two sisters are fighting over a guy. There is a lot more than that going on. Eventually, it might lead into that, but for now, at least with the series, of, as far as I've read, with all the current chapters, it has not turned into that yet. So let's let's talk about that. Sisters at War, what's about? Well, the title kind of gives it away. It makes you assume, okay, Sisters at War, are they uh, enemies in different countries? Are they, uh, you know, siblings that have been fighting for a very long time because of maybe certain circumstances? Are they two siblings that, you know, have bad parents or whatever and eventually caused them to have a breakdown and they started going at each other? You know, did something happen where a guy entered their life? You know, there's a lot of things you can kind of throw out with a title like that. And you wouldn't be really far from the truth when you actually think about what it's about. So, the two main female characters of the story, Hera and Juan, are two individuals that are very similar, but very different. And the way the series starts off is introducing the characters that showcases that they're always, like, near the top of the class. For instance, you have someone like Juan, the blonde-haired character, that is always number one. She's always excelling, and anything she does, she's always first place. While you have our other main female character, Hera, that is someone that is in second place. And throughout her entire life, basically, she's always been in second place. And so you see early on with chapter one that, you know, they're always just having this little, you know, I guess, pecking order and like who is better than the other. And obviously Hera is always coming out short. But when we look at the circumstances of the two characters, they're also very different. And it starts to make you wonder if you're, you know, haven't read the series yet, why is it called Sisters at War when they seem to be just so different? Well, another thing is, is that the characters, they have different living circumstances. One character lives very rich and high class, has great outfits, very expensive clothing, like just straight up, like she is wearing like thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of clothing on her. She is literally just a walking dollar bill, or not a dollar bill, million dollar bill, so to speak. She is a pampered princess. This is the blonde-haired character, Juan. While we have our other main character, Hera, that is someone that is basically wearing hand-me-downs or clothes that are just the standard norm, the best you can get at a low price, basically. And she is someone that, you know, is living, I guess, paycheck to paycheck. Like, her family is living paycheck to paycheck. And her grandma is very ill, very sick, but overworking to make sure that you know, Hera can be able to go to school. So, once again, the circumstances of the two characters are the exact opposite, and that is the early premise of the series. Now, as it slowly starts to expand and elaborate on what's going on, come to find out that uh, our, you know, underdog character, Hera, she might be the actual real heir to a famous artist that is within this world of Sisters at War. And the one that is the blonde-haired girl, one she is someone that has basically replaced the main original daughter. Now, we don't know exactly what has happened here. We don't know how this happened and why memories are kind of gone from one of our characters, but we do know that at the very least, there is something going on with the parents. Something happened in the past to where there was some form of child swap. However, the mother in question 
somehow knows this, knows that, uh, you know, Juan isn't the original daughter, but there's something going on here, something hidden or sinister or whatever going on, we don't really know, maybe, you know, the child was lost or abducted, we don't have any idea whatsoever, but the point, though, is, is that we find out very early on that Hera, which is the underdog and someone that's living a very poor life, is someone that technically is the heir to a very wealthy family, so it makes you wonder what happened there, and what is Juan doing and all that, and did she have a role to play pushing Hera out of this or whatever? So that's where Sisters at War kind of comes into play. Right now it's in the early stages, but the way the series is presenting itself is that one character obviously that isn't technically supposed to be there, which is Juan, she is trying to hold her place as basically this rich girl, while Hera is just trying to figure out where she is or who she is and why was she removed from the family and trying to maybe meet her mother, what actually happened. So that is the current premise of Sisters at War so far. And to kind of clarify, there is only seven chapters out at the moment. There is a few chapters after that you would have to use coins or whatever on Webtoon to be able to read it. But as someone that reads free, the first seven chapters are a really good glimpse at what to expect and if it is something that would, you know, get your interest. Now, personally, one other aspect that this series does very well is the art. Now, I'm not talking about, let's say, the artwork. The artwork looks really good for the series, but what I'm actually talking about is that the theme of the story is about literal art, that our characters are artists, or are, they're going to art school, and they're trying to, you know, learn to be famous artists, like either doing sculpting or drawing a painting, etc., and I really do like that vibe, that tone, so to speak, of the story, because, you know, it adds an interesting premise that you don't normally get to experience with stories, especially with drama stories such as this, where two characters are, you know, really good at art and sculpting figures, etc., and they're now trying to figure out, you know, who is really, like, supposed to be the heir, etc. I think that is a really cool, like, story element to add. It's very unique, and I like that. I really do like that. Now, let's talk about some of our characters, okay, or one. I want to talk about the one that's kind of being more of the antagonist role of the story right now. She definitely knows she's, hi you know, hiding a secret, like, you know, she's not the real daughter, etc., and the way she is treating Hera throughout, you know, the chapters, the first seven chapters, is pretty despicable. There is a moment to where Hera's grandma, you know, has a stroke, and she has to go to the hospital. And because of her having to go to the hospital, obviously, Hera rushes over, worried about her, you know, grandma, and realizes that they don't really have much money. So she starts to wonder if she should just quit art school, if she should just give everything up, give up her dream, her hopes, everything that she strives for, or she's been striving for her entire life, should she just give everything up to be able to help out her grandma and it kind of shows her overall personality a lot about Hera as a character that she's willing to sacrifice what she cares about for her family member and so the school hears about this and some of the classmates of Hera hear about this and obviously Juan which is the antagonist of the story hears about it and as she goes to school you have Juan throw money on the ground literally throws like money all over the ground, and it's like, here you go for your grandma, you can go, uh, you know, pay her bills and all that, and she wasn't asking anything for a return, she was just making a statement showing how pathetic Hera was, and it's a very disgusting show of power, obviously, from Juan to do, and it shows, once again, the dynamic between the two characters, how one has empathy for others, while one lacks empathy and is very selfish, they're, you know, the exact opposites of each other, and I think that the overall character dynamic and the way that's being introduced with the chapters is absolutely fantastic, but to kind of get a little bit, you know, in-depth into the money situation, so basically... Hera gets the money off the ground, and despite how pathetic it is and how it hits her pride, she does it, because deep down she wants to do that for her grandma to be able to make sure her grandma doesn't die, you know, she, she does that, she sucks up her pride, etc., to be able to do it, and so she does grab the money, delivers it to her grandma to be able to help her out, and obviously the overall story is presenting a fact that eventually there's going to come a time to where Hera's going to have to make a decision. She's going to have to either give up art school or she's going to have to get a second job to be able to maybe help out her grandma from dying. 
one or the other is going to eventually happen. That is what the story is definitely setting up, and that is kind of the drama of the story right now, which, I, once again, I'm very happy about. And the reason why I am is because usually these type of stories, like with two girls going at each other, like bickering and have a drama, it'd be with a guy intro being introduced and, you know, some form of romance and drama with that. But that's not the case so far, and I think that is really tasteful and very nice for the story to do, that it's not devolving into these low-hanging fruit cliches, it's trying to do something unique, and I do like that. So overall, Sisters at War is pretty good. It is a legitimately good series. If you're someone that is looking for like a slice of life drama with a art style, like, you know, like artist and art school and sculpting, if you like that type of theme or that very unique premise... I really do recommend giving this series a try. It's pretty good. It is. I really do like it. And I feel like there's many of you out there that might enjoy that because of just how unique it actually is. But um, if you're wanting to read this series, link is in the description. I highly recommend you to check it out. It is pretty good. And as transparency's sake, if you do click on the link, it does help me out a lot. And I would greatly appreciate that. So do click on that link. But uh, with that... Be safe, stay healthy, thank you so much everyone, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, or subscribe if you want more of my content. Chibi out.